should we be concerned about animals? Does it really make a difference how we treat them? Um, I come from a civilization that calls itself Vasudheva Kutumbakam, the earth as one family. And whether it be the microbe in your gut or other animals, because we are animals, we forget we are animals. We think animals are outside humans. No, we are animals. We'd better be compassionate to other humans. We'd better be compassionate to all life on earth because it's a condition of our being. We depend on life on earth. We are a continuum. And I think colonialism, the anthropocentrism, the patriarchy, the racism that it gave birth to, that bundle of funny emotions and hierarchies 500 years ago, um, it is a very violent system. And it's a system based on exclusion. And it's a system that declared that the earth was dead, which got accelerated after the finding of coal and fossil fuels, you know, to define living systems as dead and movement and creativity coming out of dead fossil carbon. Uh, the definition of nature as dead also defined animals as merely milk machines or meat machines. And that is a violation of the way the earth works. She's living, she's Gaia. It's a violation of the rights of all beings. We have worked together on the rights of Mother Earth and all her beings as a declaration that's parallel to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And the violation of all beings can also be a violation to plant beings because not only are we waking up slowly in the industrial world that animals are sentient beings, we're waking up to the fact that plants are sentient beings too. What's going on with insects and pollinators? Are their numbers declining and how does that affect us? In industrial agriculture, wherever there's spraying of pesticides, wherever there's spraying of Roundup, which kills the plants on which the monarch butterfly, for example, feeds, you have a decline of 90% in the monarch butterfly population. In intensively farmed, chemically intensively farmed area, you have 75% disappearance of the bee population. On the other hand, when we do biodiversity sensitive farming as in Navdanya the movement I started. On our farm in Dehradun that is a research conservation and teaching farm, we just did a study. The pollinators are six times more than in the forest. So the forest is the highest that nature creates in that ecosystem. But just by planting lots of diversity and creating lots of food for different pollinators, We've created a pollinator sanctuary when all we were doing was saving seeds. It was a seed bank. On the other hand, in the areas where Bt toxin is grown, Bt cotton, now Bt cotton has a toxin in it which is in every cell of the plant. It's in the pollen of the plant. Our studies are showing there's not a single pollinator on a Bt cotton plant, not one. If you were in charge of the food system in the United States, and the rest of the world, what five to 10 action steps would you take? The first thing I do is stop subsidizing the poison makers and the killers of the planet and our health. I would actually put out a bill to say you owe this much to society for the harm you have done. After all, there's a principle called polluters should pay. Toxic polluters should pay for the damage they've done. The second is, have all this managed, I'll have to make my regulatory agencies independent of the influence of these toxic giants. The third thing, America has emptied out its countryside and, and this model is being forced on the rest of the world. I would stop using the State Department and the White House to destroy sustainable non-violent small farm systems of the rest of the world that provide 80% of the food we eat and actually heal the earth while they're growing the food. I would stop using foreign policy as an arm to destroy the rest of the world. So protect small farmers where they are 
and rejuvenate small farms in America. Every time I give a call, talk in this country in universities, if, by the way, I will ask a question, how many of you would be farmers if you could? 80% of the hands go up. That's what young people want to do. They don't want to be on Wall Street. They don't want to be in Silicon Valley. The ones who are thinking about where is the planet going and they can watch the precipice. They say, I want to be part of the regeneration. And I think we need very, very creative systems that allow the land that is today controlled and owned by investors and banks, because every farmer is in debt, the farmer driving the tractor, and tomorrow the tractor driving itself is not a farm anymore in the sense that there's an owner called the farmer. It's the financial system that's taken over. And like Wall Street was bailed out, $13 trillion in 2008 collapse, in effect, the agriculture policies are bailing out the financial system every day. It is time to take the land back and put it in the hands of the young people who are dying to be part of the healing of the earth. And finally, we need to see food as health, not food as a commodity that destroys our health. And therefore, our farmers should be rewarded for growing good food. We should have farmers markets everywhere. We should not subsidize bad food that appears cheap and therefore to the poor the only option. We should let the true prices speak. And in true prices, the local, organic, biodiverse, fresh will win as the first choice of the last person.